Hello everyone. Mrs. Nicole and I hope that you are doing well. And this is going to be our last meeting for the study of Acts. We'll get back together in September and we'll do the study of Genesis. So before we go to our Bible lesson, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for always being there for us. Lord, I ask that you give the children that are listening today just the desire to, to want to know more about you, to set a quiet time, a day and a time each day to study your word and to pray. Lord, I also pray this prayer for Miss Nicole and I. And Lord, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth will be from your Holy Spirit and that they will be pleasing to your ears. <clears throat> Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, well, have you ever been caught doing something wrong? Maybe you were fighting over a toy with your brother or sister and your mother walks in the room. Well, what is your response? Do you say something like, well, it was my toy? It's easy to put the blame on someone else, and everyone stumbles in learning to live like Jesus. God gives believers power to change our thoughts and actions. Our aim for tonight is God-given faith includes power to change our actions and thoughts. In chapter 3, James talks about the tongue. It's a small part of our body, but it can do so much damage and it can corrupt the whole body. James compares the tongue to a raging fire. One day I was burning some leaves and some small, small twigs. Now as I was stirring the fire, a spark flew out and caught the grass on fire. Well, I had to call my husband over to come help me to put the fire out. That's the way our tongue is. One tiny spark can cause a forest to catch on fire. We have to watch what we say. Have you ever said something that you wish you could take back? Before we say something, we should ask ourselves three questions. Is it kind? Is it necessary? And is it true? In James 3.10, which is our memory verse, it says that out of the mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. For one minute we're praising God and the next minute we're saying bad things about our neighbor. When we speak, we should always be glorifying God. We cannot control our tongue, but God can. Believers in Jesus depend on his Holy Spirit, who lives inside our heart, to fill us with the word of, words of love, hope, and healing. <clears throat> then in, chapters, in verses 13 through 18, James tells us of two different kinds of wisdom. There is earthly wisdom and there, there's godly wisdom. Earthly wisdom is selfish, it brags, it's jealous, full of confusion, and it denies the truth, God's word. But godly wisdom is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, and full of mercy. Our words tell which wisdom we live by. The first principle is God-given faith includes power to control the tongue. Have you ever ridden a horse? Well, the bit in the horse's mouth is what controls the horse. and But sometimes the horse wants to go his own way, so he does. That is just like our tongues. Sometimes we say something without thinking. We can't take it back. We cannot control our tongue, but God can. God is infinite. Infinite means that God has no limit. He has always existed and he always will. God can control our tongue. Will you ask God to help you control your tongue? <clears throat> then we go to chapter 4 of James and he talks about people fighting and arguing. We argue because we don't get our own way. God doesn't like it when we argue and fight and fuss. When we grumble and complain, it shows that we're unhappy with God. When we pray and ask God for something, 
he doesn't give it to us because we ask for the so wrong reasons. We ask for selfish reason. But God knows what's best for us, and he wants the best for his children. In verse 7, James tells us how to overcome troubles and temptations. He says we are to submit ourselves to God and flee from Satan. If we come near to God, he will come near to us. We are to pray and repent. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, he will lift us up. God welcomes humble sinners with his love, grace, and mercy. In verse 11 through 12, James then tells us not to judge one another. There is only one person responsible for judging, and that's God. In verse 13 through 17, he tells us not to boast about tomorrow. We say that we're going here or there tomorrow, but we don't even we're not even promised tomorrow. What we ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will do this and that tomorrow. When we make plans, we should go to God first. It is much better when we make our plans with God. Our second principle is God-given faith includes power to fight sin. All Christians fight the battle with sin. We often think we can control our sin, but we cannot win the battle without God's help. God has infinite power and love. Will you ask God to help you say no to sin? And then in chapter 5, James gives us a warning about rich people. And it's not a sin to have money, but it's a sin when we have the love of money. It causes us to be selfish and greedy. We're to be careful of how, what we do with our money, and we're to be generous with it. James then talks about having patience and suffering. We will all go through suffering of some kind. It may be a, the death of a loved one or our parents going through a divorce. But James tells us not to complain when we go through suffering. Through our suffering, God is always teaching us something and he is always with us through our suffering. We must have patience through our suffering. James compares the suffering of waiting to a farmer who produces his crop. First, the farmer plants his seed, then he waters it, and then he waits for it to grow and for the harvest to come in. Like farmers who wait for crops to completely come to harvest, God's people trust him and wait on him to make everything right. James uses Job as an example of one who did suffer greatly. <clears throat> he lost all he had. He lost his children, his livestock. He was even ill for a long time, but Job never cursed God. He had patience during his suffering. In, chapter, in, in verse 13, James talks about praying. Praying is simply talking to God. We give him praise, we give him thanks, <clears throat> and we confess our sins to him. We give him all of our troubles and our joys, and we pray for others. We pray for our request also. There's much to talk to God about, and he's available 24-7. He's available any time of the day or night. We can go to him any time. God loves listening to our prayers, and he longs to hear from us. He heals, forgives, and he chooses for it to rain or sunshine. God always wants the best for his children, and God can be trusted. The third principle is God-given faith includes power to trust God. Have you ever planted a seed and waited for it to grow? Waiting for that seed can be very hard because it takes patience. My husband and I used to have a garden, and every morning I'd get up and go out to see how much the plant had grown. We can wait on God because he is always good and kind. How is God helping you to wait on him? James has encouraged us to grow in spiritual maturity. He talked about our speech our wisdom, and he also talked about not fighting with other believers. He also spoke of having patience during our time of suffering, which matures us. 
Our faith in God, which is a gift from God, can help us control our tongues, give us power to fight sin, the power to trust God, and the power to change our thoughts and actions. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, help us to control our tongue and to <clears throat> have the power to fight against sin. Help us to obey you and to love you. I Lord, ask, Lord, that you give us boldness like you gave Paul to go out and tell others about your word. Lord, thank you for always hearing our prayer and answering it. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it's time to say goodbye for this year, but we'll see you in September. Mrs. Nicole and I will be praying for you, and we love you very much. Bye-bye.